Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Shelby and I make videos about zero waste living. If you have been on my channel, welcome back. So today I kind of wanted to just talk about some zero waste tips. I'm no means am I perfect, but I have been learning and I've been on this journey and I am like, I'm ready to chat about some tips that I have kind of come up, come up with. So my first zero waste tip is to avoid buying anything new. So in the chain of buying a brand new phone case, a brand new shirt. Um, you have the production, which causes waste, and then you have the shipping, which causes CO2, and then that goes into the store, and the store probably creates more waste. I used to work at Nike, and I know for a fact that like every single t-shirt, I'm not bashing Nike, but every single t-shirt individually came in a plastic bag with a piece of paper, and that is just so wasteful. And So bottom line, if we don't create the demand for these brand new products, they will stop making it, period. And if they don't stop making it, they'll probably change their ways of how they package it or something to get you to buy it. But bottom line, like just avoid buying new things. Like, so I'll go to our little thrift store, Value Village, and I got a brand new cheese grater, like a stainless steel cheese grater for like, I think it was like $3, whatever store you go to, and you'll probably pay like, like 15 bucks. Like you just don't create a demand. And people's stuff that they're donating is good. Such a big impact in our food is just to buy stuff that's not packaged in plastic. I know some things are just unavoidable, such as like tofu. I'm lucky I live in a place where I can go around the corner and there's a cheese shop. I can go around the corner, there's a bread shop. Like everything I need is within walking distance and I can usually bring my own container and they're a-okay with it. I also do a lot of shop, pretty much all of my shopping I do at the market, so I bring my produce bags and whatnot, and I take it there. I honestly create zero waste when I go to the market. Another thing I do is um, I shop in bulk, so we have a store called Bulk Barn here, and that's where I, I do all my shopping for all my like dry goods, so my beans, my chocolate, all those little things. Um, so I just bring my jars and my bags, and I go take the metro there, and that's where I get all my food pretty much. My third zero waste tip here is just to be prepared. Um, I've been doing this lifestyle for like well, two months now and like I don't know how many times I forgot my bags or I didn't have enough bags and then I would have to get a plastic bag. It's just about being prepared. If you're not prepared and you make a mistake, you made a mistake but at least you're trying. In my purse I have like a napkin that's that can be washed. I have some forks, I have some straws. Um, in my market bag I have like a crap ton of bags that I can take to the market and then in my purse I also have bags. So it's just being prepared for where you're going. Another tip is to shop at local stores. Local stores cry happiness when you shop with them instead of the big box stores because it's actually going to them. So if you can, um, I usually love to shop at zero waste stores just because it eliminates the shipping to my house when it's just shipped right to the store. So I have a couple around me that I like to go to to grab my stuff. Um, I also love to buy fresh bread. I don't think I could ever go back to like Wonder Bread. Guys, fresh bread. Doesn't last as long, but like, oh, so much better. For example, like gift giving at Christmas and whatnot, maybe go find a small artisanal store around you. I know in my old town, like we had this like really cool place where it was like a really good brunch place, but then it had this like thing off of it that had nice knickknacks and whatnot for like good gifts for Christmas and buying stuff there would be better than going on Amazon and shopping off there. Another tip is to buy second hand. Shopping at Goodwill and Salvation Army. Guys, you can find so many good things in there. Um, I also love shopping at vintage stores. Uh, I just find exactly what I need. Like, I tried to shop at thrift stores for jeans, but like, it just doesn't fit my body. So I know I can go to a vintage store and I can buy a pair of jeans. I know it's not as cheap, but at least it's not producing something new. Because I know you can go on Fashion Nova and get these like mom jeans, but Guys, you can go to a vintage store, you're not wasting all of the water it takes to produce a new pair of jeans, and you're gonna get some nice ass vintage jeans. So, another thing I also look for in, in clothes now is natural fibers, because every time you're washing your clothes, microplastics are going into your water system. And they're doing studies where there's like, there's plastic in our rain, there's plastic in our drinking water, guys. Apparently we eat up like a credit card a day in plastic. So yeah, if you wanna really do a good impact like buy clothes that are made of cotton and linen and avoid spandex and nylon because that's all going to come off in your wash. Another zero waste tip is a reusable water bottle. This is like the biggest no-brainer. I don't remember the last time I touched a plastic water bottle. I think it was probably when I went to Europe last summer because I was in Europe and like what do you do when you're climbing a mountain and you don't have any water and you drank it all? 
and you're thirsty and it's plus 40 and you're on like a mountain face I'm a rock climber so like we were dying so obviously we had to go get some water or else we would have like died so yes there's times when water bottles are just kind of like you kind of need to but guys just just take a reusable water bottle it's not hard it takes oil to make a water bottle that you're using for what like five minutes the only case I can think of in my mind to use a plastic water bottle is if you live in Flint, Michigan. If you live in Flint, Michigan, drink as many plastic water bottles as you need. Because if you drink your tap water, you're gonna die. So I'm lucky enough to have been gifted a really, really nice water filtration system. It's called the Canyon Water Filtration System. If you can't afford that, obviously, go for a Brita. Like, at least you're doing something and you're drinking some good water, right? Another zero waste tip I can think of is just to refuse plastic. So if you're at the store and they ask you a bag, say no bag. If we don't buy it, they'll stop making it bottom line. Um, so if we all just kind of like band together and just like completely boycotted plastic, like they would just stop making it, hopefully. Maybe not, but maybe they try to figure out something else. Another zero waste tip I have that I pretty much follow religiously is to make your own drinks at home. Guys, you. You could probably make better coffee at home if you get like the right beans and whatnot. We have a French press here and we make our coffee every day. We don't go out for drinks because if you go out for drinks, like it's going to come in a plastic cup. And if me and my boyfriend do end up going for a drink, we will go to a cafe and go sit down in a cafe because I know it won't come with a plastic lid and what. Also, you're going to save money doing that at Starbucks, at least in Canada. Um, if you go there with your reusable cup, they still use a cup to put the drink into your cup because there's just sanitary issues. Get your drinks at home and you'll avoid all that plastic. Um, another huge, huge, huge zero waste um, tip is just to compost your food. If you are putting your your garbage, your, your scraps into the actual garbage and it's being sent to the, the landfill, it won't break down because there's no oxygen within and it just creates methane, which is way worse than CO2. I know a lot of cities already have a compost, at least in Canada. We have bins outside. I don't know about everywhere in Canada, but most places we have our we have our bins that we can put on our curb and it's like cur curbside um, compost. So that's how I compost. I know in other major cities you could bring your compost, like keep it in your freezer and then bring it to the compost place so I think those could be at like the market or wherever in your city I mean that's something you'll have to google but definitely compost another really 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 big issue we have is food waste uh, I'm pretty guilty of it too but recently um, me and my boyfriend have been sitting down the day before we go to the market and we're like hey what are we gonna eat this week so we'll eat like cauliflower masala and pizza and those will be our usually two meals because we like to go out because that's just who we are. We like to go out still. We're not complete hermits because we live this lifestyle. But yeah, we sit down and we plan out what we want to buy and what snacks we want to have so then we don't waste any food and that's our meal for the week. Honestly, the hardest part of being an adult is figuring out what you're going to eat every single day. Like, I have been eating pasta with vegan mayonnaise for like three days and I just... It's just so difficult. <laughs> One little tip that I do, when I go to the market, they have this little dollar section. Bruise like needs to be eaten tonight kind of food. I got three cantaloupes for the price of one. Nice superficial bruises on the side. Buy reduced food. You're gonna save it from the garbage. You're gonna save it from the compost. Biggest tip of all, you're gonna save money. Also at our house, we like to do a French clear out once a week. We'll try to eat everything. So usually the day before we go to the market, if we have no food, we'll go out and eat. But like, if we still have food, we kind of like do like a little make something out of what we have. Another huge, it's not a zero waste, but it's a definitely an eco, is to reduce your meat. I'm currently on a journey to become vegan. I used to be a vegetarian. I was sick. I don't know why, because I tried my best to like eat properly, but like I was exhausted. I was so sick. So yeah, I still eat meat a little bit, and like by little bit, I mean like a little bit, um, but I'm, that's for another video. Cows are horrible for the environment. They like, you heard of the Brazil fires? It's not natural. People are burning them down so they could clear the land for cows. So, so yeah, just lowering your meat consumption. If everybody just like had like five vegetarian meals a week and maybe two meat meals a week, it would make so much of a difference. You know, I'm not even going to talk about it right now. That's for another time. Another zero waste tip I have is beeswax wraps and silicone wrap. 
Um, beeswax wraps came into my life and they're never going to leave my life. They are better than saran wrap. Like, they just they keep your food so fresh. Like I said in a past video, I buy bread once a week and I put it in my, my beeswax wraps and it stays fresh until it's done. And then also silicone mats when you're baking in the in the oven, you just kind of have a silicone mat, you put all your stuff on it, it's non-stick, it's perfect, you can reuse it over and over and over and over and over again. Another thing I also have is bowl covers, they've come in handy on our leftovers, bowl cover on it, it's good to go. Another zero waste swap that I have made is for my period, so I use the Diva Cup and I use reusable pads, because guys, tampons and pads are so wasteful and they have chemicals on them. They don't have to disclose this kind of stuff. My favorite, favorite, favorite zero waste swap that I have probably made is my cleaners. So I made a video about zero waste swaps. So I have my bathroom cleaner, I have my general all purpose cleaner, and I have my glass cleaner. And I don't know why you would go to the store and buy a cleaner specifically for like the shower, for the toilet, for the sink, for the kitchen counters. Guys, you need vinegar, you need baking soda, you n could use Castile soap. Lemon. You don't need five different cleaners to clean your house. I use three cleaners and that's all I use and my house is pretty freaking clean. Another thing I also use is soap nuts. I don't love soap nuts. I feel like they don't clean that well. Sometimes they clean well but I have this blue shirt and every time I wash it, it comes out dirty and dirtier. But for the most part it's pretty good. I have a stain stick also that I use on my clothes because I'm an absolute klutz and I literally drop everything on myself. Another zero waste tip is to use what you have. I know coming into this lifestyle, I didn't own any of the stuff to live on my own. So obviously I got stuff new used. If you don't have plastic wrap or if you don't have like a bowl cover, put a plate on top of your bowl. Like you don't need to go buy all this brand new stuff. I know in the beginning I was completely coaxed with all this. I need to buy this, I need to buy this, I need to buy this. Guys, just use what you have and you don't need to buy into everything that everybody's like, oh, you need to buy these reusable pads, oh, you need to buy this toothbrush, oh, you need to buy these tooth pads. Just use what you have before you go out and purchase a bunch of other things. I know personally I was, I bought a couple things that I'm like, I don't even use them. All right, so those are my little zero waste tips. I'm forever on this ongoing journey about learning like more and more about zero waste and my impact in the world. I'm on this journey and I'm learning more and more about how to be more eco-friendly and how to be more sustainable. Obviously more and more information gets like put into this brain. These are just like kind of the tips that I've come to know in the first couple of months of being zero waste. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for my next video. I would just like to address my um, half dead fiddle fig tree. Guys, don't put your fiddle fig tree on your balcony in direct sunlight for two months because like every single leaf will fall off. The things I'm learning. <laughs>